while surveying the site of some ancient ruins, two young archaeologists, Derek and Margot, and their nomad friend, Moki, find themselves trapped and sinking in a whirling pool of sand. And when the dust settles, they stare up in awe at a vast chamber filled with giant relics and artifacts from another civilization. And there, at the far end of the cavern, a door with a strange inscription. All who enter these portals pass through time. Maybe we can find out where we are. Egypt. Either that, or this is the world's biggest roadside pottery shack. Isn't this fabulous? We're actually in the ancient land of the pharaohs. Maybe we can find the answer to one of the great mysteries. How the pyramids were made. You mean nobody's ever figured that out? We're still missing some of them. A real Egyptian. You were expecting an Eskimo? Try to get away during the storm, man. Eh? Get these slaves back to their brickyard. Slaves? Brickyard? Hey, looks like we will find out how the pyramids were made. Oh, the hard way. This slavery is back-breaking work. I hate it. What are you doing? A simple domino trick. Watch. Ouch! Oh! Oh, I won't be able to work. Oh, the pain. I can't stand up. If that gorilla with the whip catches you, you won't be able to sit down either. Hey, no problem. Look, I'm cured already. <sighs> Another miracle cure. You're new here. I'll find you a place to sleep. <sighs> Thanks. Um, could I ask you something? What year is this? Maybe you could just tell us, why are you a slave? Why? The accursed pharaoh has kept the Israelites in slavery for years and years, and it's getting worse all the time. The Israelites enslaved in Egypt. Now, oh, that would make it somewhere around... Go, Brain, go! I think 1200 B.C. 1200 B.C.? Wow! And that would also be just about the time in Egypt when... Look! Can it really be him? Who? But he's been gone so many years. Who is it? Still that noble bearing. It must be him. Him who? Yes, it is. Because that's his brother Aaron with him. Do, do you recognize who that is? Moses. Wow, Moses. Moses, why is it you return to us? The Lord God of our fathers has commanded me to bring you out of Egypt. Bring us out of Egypt? Yes, out of slavery, and to lead you to a land flowing with milk and honey. He further commanded Aaron to be by my side. Prepare you now to leave this land. The Pharaoh will be told he must let our people go. Come, I'll find you quarters. Uh, could we go with Moses and Aaron to the palace? 
I suppose I know the gods. Oh, isn't this exciting? You'll have your own land. If you believe that beast of a ruler will let all his slaves go free... But Moses said... I know. Let us hear now what the Pharaoh says. And just how are you commanded to come before me? I was tending my sheep at Mount Sinai when a flame sprang suddenly from the middle of a bush. The bush burned with fierce fire, yet was not consumed. And the voice of God came from the burning bush, commanding me to come here and lead forth our people. Therefore, we ask you to release the children of Israel so they may go forth into the desert to make offerings to their God. Who is this Lord whom a Pharaoh must obey? The God of the Hebrews. We beg you comply with his wishes so Egypt may be spared his punishments. That's telling him. This almighty God of yours, you can demonstrate his power. Yes, he hath commanded Aaron to show you a sign. Behold, I cast down my rod, and it shall become a serpent. Did you see that? I saw it, and you know what? I'm taking Moses' advice. He said, let my people go, and I'm gone. Now will you hearken to our Lord's command and release your Hebrew slaves? It is but a trick of the eye. My own magicians can do the same. Show them. In the name of Ramses, God of Egypt. <laughs> Such a simple trick. <laughs> Your God may have learned it from them. Do not mock the Lord, or Egypt shall suffer death and pestilence. Enough. All you seek is to take people away from their work. But I will not have my slaves released from their burdens. Be gone! Score. Pharaoh won, Moses nothing. Oh, Pharaoh, behold! That serpent of Aaron's is consuming all three of ours. It is of no consequence. Sire, in truth, it is not a trick we could do. I said it was of no consequence. Nothing matches the power of the gods of Egypt. Desist, Moses. The Pharaoh will never release us. He goes to his river palace. Tomorrow, we will confront him there with yet another sign. He's not one to give up, is he? It would be better if he did. I fear he brings us not freedom, only more shame and suffering. Yes? Moses and Aaron beg an audience. Bring them here. Why do you continue to see them? So that they may continue to fail and thus prove to these ignorant Hebrew slaves they will never be free because they have no god greater than Pharaoh. Shh. There they are. Oh, Pharaoh, we ask you again to let our people go as our Lord commands. And we offer another sign of his might. His might? Do you not see the true might of Egypt? You have but to look there, across the river. Behold the temple of Abu Simbel. And whose image is that? The Pharaoh's. And not just one statue, but two. What work have your god done to compare? Where stands any shrine as grand as this that proclaims him? Looks like the score is going to be Pharaoh too. Shh. Look also at the river flowing past your idols. Because you will not listen, the Lord God of the Hebrews has empowered me to turn the water into blood. Throughout.
throughout the land, even wells and pools are now blood, and all fish shall die, and all reek of death. I don't think we've seen the last of it. Let's go tell the other slaves anyway. Will you issue now the order our God commands? No! Your sign is of no consequence. Be gone. Vex me no further. Guards! They're trying to trick me. What they need are more beatings, less food. We can break up their families. Well, what is it? From a sealed pitcher. This is a sign our magicians cannot duplicate. Are you saying the god of Hebrew slaves is more powerful than the ruler of Egypt? It is not possible! Moses did it! He finally convinced the pharaoh! He turned all the water in Egypt into blood! Look! Hey, start packing the silverware! We're getting out of here, but fast! Is it possible? Here comes the boss, man. You'll hear. So, you've seen what Moses has done? Has the Pharaoh responded? Oh, yes. The Pharaoh has responded. He's issued some new orders. You will start immediately working night and day, digging new wells, until we have clear water again. Thanks to Moses, your labors have been doubled. And if there's any blood in the wells of Egypt, it will be yours. <laughs> Remember the old days? When you wanted water, you just turned the shiny little faucet? Yeah. And maybe popped in a bunch of ice cubes from the fridge. All the nostalgia. Look who's coming. Did you hear? The Pharaoh now has us digging wells. We heard, but soon. Is this how you help us? May the Lord judge you. You have caused us to be loathsome in the eyes of the Pharaoh. Soon you will be free. But you are not freeing us. You are only giving him yet another weapon against us. The Pharaoh will relent, for a plague is about to descend upon Egypt. I thought our labors would be to convince the Pharaoh, but it is our own people who are the disbelievers. I wonder what sort of plague Moses is going to call down this time. I can't imagine. Oh, look, a frog jumped right up into the wagon. And there's another. And another. Hey, Moki, turn around and see the frogs back here. <laughs> I can't see any. There's a frog in my eyes. Look at this. That's it. He's called down a plague of frogs. It is agreed? Yes, speak to your lord. Remove the plague of frogs from Egypt, and I will let your people go, so they may make offerings to him. When shall you do this, O Pharaoh? Tomorrow! You may all go tomorrow. Hebrews! All of you, unload those carts and get back to work. Who orders this? Who do you think the Pharaoh? But just yesterday, he agreed to our departure. So he changed his mind to work, slaves! I knew it. He will never let us go, never. The Pharaoh will be punished for his duplicity. The Lord will send even more plagues into Egypt. Children of Israel, I command you now as your strength is being tested, have faith in the Lord God of our fathers, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He shall not desert you, for he exists that you may exist. You know what? I think we should get out of Egypt. We've been here too long already. This job's killing me. I know, I know. But here comes Moses. Maybe he has another plan. Have you heard? The Pharaoh has increased our work again. He gives us more beatings and less food. Our children grow sick. Old friend. Let me finish. Before you came, we could live here. The work was hard, but we could do it. You have made our life only more unbearable. Have patience. Another plague has been called down upon the Pharaoh. Let me speak out. You, Moses, are the plague against us. 
These voices you hear at night, how can they be that of our God, when his signs add only suffering to his people? And what have the plagues accomplished? Nothing. Think back. After the frogs, there was the plague of flies, which descended upon the Egyptians and turned the air so filthy and foul that the Pharaoh agreed we could go. But after you caused the flies to leave, again he broke his promise. Again we were slaves. Then next, a plague smote their cattle. Oxen, camels, and horses perished, as did even sheep in the pasture. And the plague of storms, when giant hailstones such as were never seen before ravaged the fields, destroyed the crops, and savage lightning slashed the land with fire and fury nothing could withstand. And finally, the plague of locusts, which consumed the new green crops. But with each plague, another broken promise. The old guy's right. Nothing's gonna shake that pharaoh, so let's shake ourselves out of this place. Loki, what are you doing? Oh, making a brand for it, that's what. You, the wagon, stop! Oh, here comes the bad guy. What's happening? It's still daytime. How could the sun be going down? Well, where are the headlights on this thing? I can't see to steer. Uh, everybody all right? Oh, we ran out of gas. It can only be another plague of darkness. This is absolutely intolerable. For three days, Egypt has been plunged into darkness. We ask only... I know, I know. All right, go. All of you, go. Go and worship this god of yours as you please. Just release Egypt from this evil mantle of night. You have dealt deceitfully with us before. We shall go first, and then the sun will return. Very well, but your sheep and cattle will remain here. But we cannot survive in the wilderness without them. You have your choice, go or stay. But the cattle remain. The cattle belong to the Hebrews. We will not leave without them. And then you stay. Now out of my sight. Never let me see your faces again. Because on that day, you die. I did the right thing not to let them go. I still fear the vengeance Moses predicted. You mean that nonsense about an angel of death? <laughs> Just an empty threat. If there are any more plagues, we shall answer with more whippings. <laughs> Hear me well, my people. At midnight, the Lord will go out into the middle of Egypt, and all the firstborn in the land shall die. <laughs> However, each Hebrew family will be spared if they smear lamb's blood over the lintel of their door. Otherwise, every firstborn shall die. From the oldest child of the Pharaoh to the oldest of the lowly maidservant working in the mill. Was the Pharaoh warned? And he scoffed. Go tell all to so mark their doors so the angel of death shall pass over them. So that's where Passover comes from. We put ourselves in the safekeeping of the Lord our God. Pharaoh, I come with grievous news. What is it? Speak! Your son is dead. Impossible. Throughout the palace, there is death in every family, and also, I fear, throughout the land. My son, I must go to him. It may be just a fever. 
This is not a fever. All Egypt has been visited as forewarned by the angel of death. My son is dead. Guards, use your swords. Go away, all of you. Go and serve your lord as you have asked. They're cattle. Take your flocks and herds, and not a hand shall be raised against you. And Moses, pray for me and my stricken people. shows the way by that bright pillar of cloud. Isn't this wonderful? We're free. Uh, perhaps. What do you mean, perhaps? I still do not trust the Pharaoh. We should never have let them go. Now we have no slaves to build my temples and work long hours in the fields. We must get them back to serve us. You followed them? Yes, old Pharaoh. They've stopped the camp by the sea. Then they are trapped. Call out the army. Make ready 600 chariots. The Hebrews will again be our slaves or dead. We shall rest by the waters and worship, then tomorrow. Look there behind us, the army of the Pharaoh. They have us trapped. Fear not, stand still and witness the power of the Lord. You see, the pillar of cloud is moving in front of them to hide us. Hold up, the weight of the clouds pass. Their backs are to the sea, they cannot escape. That stopped them. But the cloud can't last forever, and we can't move away. Oh, we came here but to die. We might as well have stayed and filled our graves in Egypt. Look, what is Moses doing? Now, people of Israel, Cross the sea! Cross the sea! What is that wind? It will only help us by dispersing the clouds. Then we shall fall upon them. You're not going with us? No, <laughs> but we'll think of you every time we see a brick. <laughs> or a lot of frogs. 
And we wish you well in the land of milk and honey. I will never live to see it. And it is right that I do not. Because I failed Moses and my lord, I did not believe. I suppose when the story of this exodus is told, everyone will remember how the Egyptians were tested by the plagues. But the real story is how we, the Hebrews, were tested in our faith. And Israel saw the punishment of the Lord against the Egyptians, and the people feared the Lord, and they believed in the Lord and in his servant, Moses. Thank you.